morning. Uh, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, my name is uh, Srikant Sridharan and I'm a product manager for high performance analog products at uh, Peregrine Semiconductor. And my topic of today's presentation is going to be about Ultra CMOS power limiters, uh, the CMOS monolithic alternative to discrete uh, pin diode solutions. And uh, I'll start off by talking a little bit about uh, pin diodes, giving a, a brief overview. Uh, I'll follow it up with the Ultra CMOS uh, solution and uh, also talk about the, the products we're launching at uh, MTT this week. Just want to give a brief overview of our company. Uh, Peregrine is a publicly traded company uh, headquartered in uh, San Diego, California. We are fabulous. Uh, we are uh, the founders of RFSOI technology. Uh, we've spent the last uh, 25 years uh, perfecting um, the technology for commercial RF applications. Um, we participate in multiple markets, including handsets, uh, wireless infrastructure, and space as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get into the power limiter details here. So we talk about uh, power limiting protection needed by electronic devices. Uh, there's lots of great applications for power limiters. Uh, specifically, if we talk about protecting the RF ports in test and measurement equipment, uh, the front ends in uh, LNAs or any communication modules, uh, receivers and tactical radios from intentional jammers in military warfare, uh, as well as uh, ESD strikes that happen uh, through all electronic components. Uh, so there's a lot of great applications for uh, limiting power. There's a lot of requirements for limiting power. And the beauty of power limiters is they have to be invisible and let the receiver do its thing when there's a low sig signal level and protect the receiver when there's a high signal level. Okay, sorry about that, technical difficulties. Um, so we talk, we talk about a little bit about power limiters. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, how power limiter works. Just give a very basic overview. Uh, the graph shows a, a typical ideal power limiter. Uh, below a, a threshold level, the limiter passes the input signal without any attenuation. At the threshold, the limiter kind of limits the amount of input power that's passed to the output up to the maximum power. And then the limiting range is the power range between the threshold and the maximum uh, power level. So at the maximum power level, that's the amount of signal that leaks to the output, and that's specified as kind of the leakage power. When we talk about uh, designing power limiters for real products, uh, there's a lot of diff different design considerations uh, from the PCB area, uh, thermal heat dissipation, uh, RF performance, uh, like insertion loss, IP3, IP2, uh, leakage power. Um, response and recovery time is also another really important character uh, consideration. ESD rating and protection, those all go into you know, how easy it is to design the solution, the PCB uh, area, bomb costs, uh, flexibility, repeatability, and reliability of the solution. Uh, and a lot of these objectives can be achieved by the right process technology choice. So let's briefly talk about pin diodes and what they're about. You know, pin diodes have been around for a very long time. Um, They've actually been around for decades. Uh, they have basically a three-layer device with a, a lightly doped intrinsic I layer between two more heavily doped P and N layers. The intrinsic I region permits the diode to act as a current control resistor that can switch between a high impedance state and a low impedance state. Uh, the pin junction capacitance affects the amount of signal that will be allowed to pass through uh, when the device is in the high Z off state. Um, and pin diodes are typically manufactured in either gallium arsenide or silicon. When we talk about uh, pin diode limiter products, uh, discrete pin diode limiters are commonly used to accomplish the pin diode limiting function. Um, the block diagram here shows a typical single stage power limiter uh, where it has a limiter diode along with an RF choke and two DC blocking capacitors. Uh, the input signal, when large enough, uh, turns the diode in effectively into a, a low impedance state, causing a mismatch that reflects a lot of the power back to the source. Uh, pin diodes have some great advantages, uh, really low loss, uh, it can handle really a, a large amount of power, and uh, it's a passive device so it doesn't necessarily need a detector. However, there are quite a lot of disadvantages, you know, it requires an RF choke, DC blocking capacitors, uh, the response and recovery time is not always very good. 
uh, the linearity is limited as long, along with the ESD and most importantly it has very limited integration capability with other building blocks. With Ultra CMOS technology there's a monolithic alternative to designing uh, pin diodes, uh, pin diode limiters. Um, let me talk a little bit about Ultra CMOS technology and what it is. It's essentially a patented variation of silicon on insulator technology. There's about a, a tenth of a micron of silicon that's processed on a semi-insulating substrate, and that substrate can be silicon or sapphire. When we talk about Ultra CMOS, the CMOS really signifies standard CMOS manufacturing. As we all know, CMOS is the most widely used semiconductor process technology in the world, uh, and that's known for reliability, low cost, high yield, and most importantly, monolithic integration. Uh, so what we're doing with Ultra CMOS is we're utilizing a really high resistivity substrate that essentially eliminates a lot of the parasitic capacitances that affect other process technologies like bulk CMOS uh, and that enables us to de design very high linearity devices with high F max and ex exceptional isolation. Uh, and it's a great, great process technology for power limiter uh, products and I'll get into that. I want to show you an example of what we're able to do with uh, RF, our RF CMOS technology, Ultra CMOS. Uh, the picture here shows a 32 watt uh, single pole five throw switch that has four transmit paths and one receive path. We're monolithically integrating all five RF paths along with the bias generator control logic and ESD. There's no external biasing components. Uh, there's no need for uh, putting external ESD protection because it already has ESD protection integrated internally. Uh, it's repeatable and reliable, uh, simple. Uh, you just drop it into your board with maybe some tuning matching components outside and that's it. We took that process technology and we went ahead and moved into power limiter design and this is what we have to talk about. Um, Ultra CMOS monolithic power limiters are integrating RF analog and digital functions. Um, just like the ideal power limiter graph that was shown earlier, um, below the P1DB, the limiter is invisible to the load. It doesn't affect the receiver performance at all with very minimal insertion loss. And at the, at the P1DB, the limiter starts to limit the input power up to the maximum allowable power. Um, the great feature about what we're doing with power limiters is you can actually adjust the threshold based on your application by applying a control voltage externally uh, and that can be used to trade off large signal and small signal performance. Uh, unbiased protection, so even if you don't put any uh, bias control voltage to this part, it still protects your receiver and that's a great benefit of using um, our concept. Most importantly, you don't need any external biasing inductors, resistors, or blocking capacitors. It's truly a drop-in solution. I want to give an example of how uh, discrete pin diodes are, are implemented today. Uh, some of you might be quite familiar with this, who've been designing RF and microwave circuits for years. Uh, the example here shows a multi-stage pin diode, pin diode limiter. It has two pin diodes, an inductor, two DC blocking capacitors, separated by a quarter wave transmission line and some external ESD protection. Uh, why do you need something like this? Well, with a single stage approach, it may not give you the required isolation from input to output to protect your receiver. By using uh, a two-stage limiter, or multi-stage limiter in this case, uh, you're using two pin diodes, each one designed separately, one for low threshold and one for high isolation, and they're separated by a quarter wave transmission line where you have a maximum uh, voltage and a minimum voltage, uh, maximum voltage here and a minimum voltage here to trade off that power handling and leakage. You know, this is a 12 by 6 uh, millimeter area. Uh, what, 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 what could you do if you're able to get rid of all that board space and, and come up with an alternative in a 3 by 3 package? Well, that's what we've done. We've actually been able to integrate uh, a lot of the power limiting function without using pin diodes in a 3 by 3 millimeter package. I want to give an example of uh, how we handle the power. You know, just because you're able to uh, minimize the PCB board area, you still have to deal with the heat problem. Uh, with pin diodes, they reflect a lot of the power back to the source. They don't dissipate a lot of the power in the diode itself. But with our power limiter, 
what's actually happening is we're actually able to stand off a lot of the power by dissipating it right through our solution. Uh, I'm showing here a thermal map of an ultra CMOS limiter that has been hit with a 10 watt 40 dBm CW signal and 5 watts of that power is being dissipated right through the diode. Uh, it's hard to see on the graph but this goes up to a junction temperature of about 240 degrees Celsius. The great benefit of this is we didn't use any external heat sinks. This was measured right out on our EVK uh, dropped in. Uh, no thick copper layers are needed and our thermal resistance is, is very small, 16 degrees C per W. Uh, you know with pin diodes the thermal resistance is really high and when that happens uh, the junction temperature goes up and exponentially reduces the lifetime of the diode. Uh, you'll see pin diode uh, manufacturers list the theta JC around 80 degrees C per W. So it's a significant difference in how we're able to manage the heat versus the discrete pin diode solutions. RF performance, I uh, want to give a few measured data points of how our power limiters are measuring today. Uh, the graph on the left here shows the insertion loss, the S21 of uh, one of our power limiters uh, going all the way up to 6 gigahertz. It's got a really low wideband insertion loss, less than a dB up to 6 gigahertz. Um, and then the return loss is really a stable over temperature. We're getting about 30 dB at 6 gigahertz. So this is really fantastic small signal performance. And this is actually the performance of the diode when it's not in even limiting. So it's not affecting the load. It's just great small signal performance. Then what happens when the large signal comes in and the limiter diode kicks in, you want to be able to protect your receiver. And the graphs here are measured data that show how the input power and the output power uh, respond and the limiter has the ability to switch the adjustable threshold from 22 dBm to 32 dBm. Uh, when we talk about leakage power, this is actually at the maximum power that the diode can handle, how much of it actually goes to the load. Uh, the linearity is exceptional. Uh, you will not see this kind of linearity performance with pin diodes, getting 65 dBm IP3 and over 100 dB IP2. Uh, and you can see that it holds up really quite well as you change the control voltage. And by changing the control voltage, you're able to trade off the leakage power and P1 dB as well. Another really key important uh, requirement for pin diodes is they need to respond quickly to the limiting event and recover from the limiting event really quickly. Um, the example here, what we're actually showing here is a, a single tone, a one gigahertz pulsed RF test where we've hit our, our uh, ultra CMOS a power limiter with a one gigahertz pulse signal and then we've looked at the output to see how fast it not only responds to the really uh, large incident power but how it recovers from the limiting event. The red curve here is the P1dB limiting threshold line. So any excursions above that P1dB is the limiting event. Uh, and we're able to respond really quickly without any uh, signals slipping to the output. Uh, this is really, really exceptional performance. Very hard to be uh, replicated by pin diodes. In pin diodes, the recovery time depends on the minority carrier lifetime. Basically, the, how fast the negatively charged electrons combine with the positively charged holes in the eye layer. And you'll find that pin diode manufacturers are, are playing a few games by doping the intrinsic eye layer with gold to help reduce the uh, minority carrier lifetime. But even by doing that, they're still in the tens of nanoseconds, whereas the ultra CMOS solution is in the nanosecond range. Another great benefit and requirement um, for a lot of systems today is to have really high ESD protection or ESD rating. Um, with ultra CMOS limiters, we don't require DC blocking capacitors. So you, you not only can use it for ESD uh, protection, but you can use it as an ESD clamp as well. Uh, the graph here actually shows a transmission line pulse measurement where we emulated a 2 kV uh, HBM human body model ESD strike. And that's equivalent to about 1.5 amps of, of current. The measurement shows that given a 2 kV HBM ESD strike, the ultra CMOS solution is able to clamp the output voltage to um, 8 volts with under unbiased conditions and up to 16 volts with uh, a control voltage of negative 1.5 volts. Inherently, the ESD rating of the device is uh, exceptional. Uh, human body model class 3A, and that's about 8 kilovolts. 
Um, you know, with pin diodes, you can look at all their data sheets. You, you, you'll be hard to find something, anything better than a class zero, which is a 250 volt rating. So really, really exceptional ESD performance that you get with an RFC MOS solution like uh, what's offered by Peregrine. I want to briefly talk about the products that we are launching at MTT this week. Uh, we have two products. Uh, one of them is the PE45140, and the other one is the PE45450. Um, they're, the PE45140 is the low threshold limiter, and the 450 is what's called the wide bandwidth product. Uh, they're both um, got a power handling, a pulse power handling of 50 watts or 47 dBm, and 10 watts, uh, 40 dBm CW. Very fast response and recovery time. Um, can protect your receiver under unbiased protection as well. And the ESG ratings are 8 kV HPM. We talk about the value proposition of these products for different markets and applications. Um, you know, they're really simple, repeatable, and reliable protection for demanding uh, mobile portable radios and test and measurement applications. Uh, power handling, 50 watt pulse power handling. Uh, allows your receiver designs to handle really large jammers and unexpected power surges. Um, the adjustable limiting threshold, flexible power limiting across different platforms and architectures. A really fast response and recovery time and exceptional ESD. Want to give an example of an application of how uh, the pin diode limiters are being used in receivers today. Uh, Software-defined tactical radios are used in uh, military communications, and they require a power limiter to protect the receiver from intentional jammers. Um, and that's going to require really high power handling uh, oops, and, and fast protection. In the second example, I'm showing a spectrum analyzer using the 45450, and you can use a power limiter right at the front end of the uh, spectrum analyzer RF input to protect your attenuator and mixer from being overloaded. Again, uh, excellent ESD production and high linearity are really helpful for this application. We do have uh, data sheets posted on our website. You can go ahead and download them if you're interested. Um, samples and EVKs are available today. Um, and so go ahead and, and come over to our booth and we can talk more about it and, and share more information if you're interested. We are also in the process of developing uh, more differentiated products uh, within the power limiter space. Uh, we're starting with our two products today, which is the 2 gigahertz limiter and the 6 gigahertz limiter, and we're expanding into different areas, higher frequency, higher power, lower threshold, along with more features. Um, so we do have a really uh, nice roadmap of what we want to do with this technology. Just a brief recap then about our advantages versus the pin diode limiter solution. Um, you know, we're able to eliminate external biasing components uh, with ESD ratings. Uh, we protect your receivers in unpowered conditions, really high power line handling, exceptional linearity, uh, response and recovery time, uh, which is a really big deal in radar as an example where in radar if the transmit signal bleeds over and jams the receiver, it could potentially damage the receiver. So you want to be able to uh, respond and recover quickly to the limiting event. And you just can't do that with pin diodes today. Um, and then the wide bandwidth support and low insertion loss are, are great benefits of our Ultra CMOS limiter solution. So in conclusion, um, you know, Ultra CMOS power limiters have arrived. Um, Peregrine Semiconductor are the inventors of RF SOI technology. Uh, Ultra CMOS is a patented variation of SOI. Uh, the high resistivity substrate is the key enabler. Um, Ultra CMOS is a viable technology alternative to gas-based pin diode limiters. Uh, we have 50 watt, 47 dBm solutions available today uh, with more products to follow. And it, essentially what we're trying to say is our power limiters are monolithic, bringing fundamental improvements in three key areas, RF performance, product reliability, and monolithic integration. Thank you.